What the hell was that? I went, into the, I went into the Elite Four expecting a war, an epic battle of which I would be cursing and having to restart and pick a new team maybe, and I didn't even get a skirmish. That was incredibly easy. What the hell? Really, what the hell? I leveled my team to 50, expecting that the Pokemon I fought were going to be on a lot higher levels than me. And that was not the case. Which is probably fair. It was probably fair that they were right around the same level, but... I walked into the Elite Force Chambers, and I saw the clues, or there weren't really clues, I actually mistook one of them for a clue, and it was just straight up telling you what it was. Basically, that the Elite Four had Dark, Psychic, Ghost, which for some reason I thought was normal, and Fighting, which is an interesting four to use. I sort of equate some of those as forming their own rock, paper, scissors triangle in a way that fire, water, and grass does. So it's it's an interesting one to use. I fought the ghost first, first because I was not sure if the levels were going to scale and I figured that I would have the most problems with normal because I thought it would be normal. It says something that doesn't fear ghosts and I was like, well normal Pokemon aren't affected by ghost attacks. So a classic example of me overthinking things. I go in there, <laughs> I go in there and fight Caitlyn, which is a long story altogether about me and people named Caitlyn, but she was easy. There's just no other way to say it. She was easy. I think, I don't know who it was that I used to kill the first one. But after that, I think I probably swept her team with my Haxorus and like one Dragon Dance. I did a Dragon Dance, I took the move, and then I just one-shotted the rest of her team. That was it. That was pretty much the same story for the next Pokemon, for the next Elite Four person I fought. I want to say it was, I want to say it was Dark, maybe, I don't know, I mean... There's not really much to say about the Elite Four for me, just because I killed them. It, they didn't stand a chance. With my psych, with Psychic, I think I went through with Galvantula, and I don't think I swept the team, but I think I got pretty close with him, and I came in and finished off with Haxorus, I think, but yeah, it was nothing. It was nothing. And of course, after that, they do an interesting twist. Now, I knew that I would be fighting N at some point, and I knew I would have to deal with with the new dragon at some point. The dark, not the dark dragon, the electric dragon at some point, because I hadn't yet. But in the middle of the Elite Four boss scenario, the classic four Elite Four members and fight the champion right in a row with the same team, so you have to deal with all the problems that five different teams would show they say, we're going to interject some extra storyline, but we're also going to give you the chance to completely change your team, heal up your Pokemon. It's not a challenge if they do that. The Elite Four wasn't a challenge, and then they just let you... I think that really neutered a lot of the challenge of the boss scenario for me, because... They split it up. The hardest thing about the Elite Four is that you had to fight five trainers in a row with completely different teams and just deal with all of them. I mean, you could use items to heal up in between, but at a certain point you have to deal with 26 different Pokemon, all of which are usually quite good, with only six. So, just an interesting cinematic when when uh, Team Plasma's castle comes up and 
violates the Elite Four area with its ladders or something. It was kind of an odd little thing. And takes you to his castle. The bad guy of the series... I mean, he's he's a little questionable, but the bad team of this, of this game lets you run around their castle picking up extra items, some of which are nice. I think there were some full restores in there or something. Switch out as many Pokemon as you want. You can go back and retrain things with some guy who teleports you back there. You can go back and buy more items if you ran out of them. You could switch your Pokemon. And I feel like I'm repeating myself. They... Ugh. So, Ben comes up and he's got his dragon, and your dragon pops up, of course, because it's going to happen. You have to catch it, which is why they give you a Master Ball. And what I've learned now is that if you don't catch it, it will make you keep fighting it until you catch it. So, I mean, it's part of the story. You kind of need the dragon anyway. It, he wasn't that hard to catch for me. I think I just caught him with something like an Ultra Ball or whatever and saved my Master Ball. Usually I try to do that, but it wasn't too hard. Though I don't remember Palkia being all that hard to catch either, so it's kind of consistent there. Then it actually gives you the ability to switch out the dragon for one of your other Pokemon. I figured since it was electric, I would replace my electric spider with it. Makes sense. I fought in, and my legendary dragon kind of got its ass kicked by his legendary dragon. Yeah, it just... I don't know. He hit me with a Hyper Beam eventually, and I was like, I don't have Hyper Beam. That doesn't seem fair. So, my legendary dragon dies first. And then I remember, oh, that's right, I have another dragon. And he just used Hyper Beam. So, I send Haxorus out there, I get the speed boost, and then I... I think he had some damage on him, but I kill him with Dragon Claw from Haxorus with his ridiculous attack. His attack stat, that is. I don't think I lost another one of my Pokemon to N. He was pretty easy. At this point of the game, I've seen a lot of the Pokemon that there are. And the ones that I haven't seen are evolved from forms that I have. So I know that a certain Pokemon, like say the Turtle, it's Rock Water, because I have its pre-evolution. I know that it's going to have certain, might have certain attacks, like Aqua Jet, but it wasn't really an issue. I pretty much went through his team without too many issues. I did see the Zork, the fox thing. It was disguised as a steel Pokemon. I was like, what? What? There it went. What? Didn't know what it was. Didn't have a problem with it because I killed it before I figured out what it was. It's dark something. I, mean, I don't know what it is. It's the one that I think you need Celebi to... to uh, Celebi to get in the game, though I've heard there's a cheat code. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. So I beat in. And his boss guy comes up, or the person that's trying to get him to a place where he... I mean, he basically he's using him. He's been hinting at that throughout the entire time. And then you have to fight him. So he's the final boss. I think, okay, well... Why not? He's six guys to fight at the end. I didn't really have any issues with him, except for one Pokemon. Hydreigon, or whatever the hell that thing is called. Dino's Evolution. I knew what it was. I knew it was Dark Dragon. But that thing almost single-handedly killed me. I think it was probably the perfect counter for my team in that it was pretty fast and it had very good special attack and it happened to have four moves that just killed me. I think it had like Surf, Fire Blast, maybe Dragon Pulse and something else that kicked my ass. The only way I beat it was I think I put a Leech Seed on it and then I just whittled it down from there until it got to a place where I killed it, I want to say, with Seismitoad eventually. I want to say. That thing was my one problem. After that, I had to, 
I basically had to answer his Pokemon while I only had one of my own, so I was reviving after that. Which is not what I would call the most glamorous way of ending the game. By presenting a single Pokemon that trumped my entire team. I think it's a little cheap that you can't use it. Because it'll, because I've, I've looked at its stats now, and I, I know it's not... It's not like the be-all, end-all of the game. But I also know it evolves at level 64, so the chances of you having that on your on your Elite Four team is pretty close to zero, just because it evolves at such a high level. And that would be a hell of a lot of grinding against Pokemon that... I mean, Lucky Egg helps, but... I thought that was a little... I thought it was a lot more difficult. I thought that Pokemon was at this level of difficulty and everything else in the game was down here. That's what I thought. I thought it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't in the same place as everything else. So it was kind of a hollow victory that I had to sort of cheaply kill that and I had no issues with everything else. And that's it. That's the end of the main storyline of the game. I think it's pretty obvious to you that I was very disappointed in the final boss sequence. I only had one issue, which I felt was... which I felt was tacked on at the very end in order to make up for the lack of difficulty throughout the rest of the boss battles. Maybe you guys have had a different experience, but that's what it felt like to me. And I was really not a fan of it. I didn't like how they split up the Elite Four members and the main boss character. I didn't like how the Elite Four was easy as all hell. I really hated it, man. I was very surprised, but I really hated this Elite Four sequence. I mean, you gotta understand that the last time the last time I went through by the skin of my teeth and the boss was hella difficult to have six Pokemon that could kick your ass. And this time, I think there was one. Just one. I don't know. If you have any opinions or comments about the ending sequence, go ahead and leave them in the comment box. I'll be back with one more video talking about my impressions of the entire game and just um, and my findings on how it was to go through this game blind. So, see you next time.